Hello and welcome to a new style of tournament, a cage match tournament. So 16 of us signed up and a bunch of us voted on different cards from Nocturne that we would like to see be played in a cage match. Uh, we were paired up and then assigned cards based on the votes. And we are playing first to three wins the entire match here. So the card for this match is Druid and I just went over the boon there. Flames Gift, Moon's Gift and wins gift i'll leave a link to the tournament description down below so you can have a closer look at the details there if interested in the meantime let's look at the board for a bit so naturally being a druid cage match i went and looked at druid but it seems a little bit uh, underwhelming here especially considering lookout is there for the trashing moon i don't care about and wind i also don't care about because it seems like you want to build something with Wharf and walled village here and you don't really need to go looking in your discard for things with the moon or getting a dungeon with the wind so we are both going to open here my opponent puck puck i don't know how to say that properly with a tournament and a lookout the tournament i thought would give me a small chance of picking up five which would be a wharf Small chance, of course, a uh, small chance, but it doesn't uh, pan out in this first shuffle here. An alternative opening there, maybe look out silver, maybe double look out is what I was really considering. But I went for the tournament, fishing for a wharf, didn't quite get there, but neither does my opponent, so I can't really complain too much about that. I do pick up a second look out as I feel trashing very quickly here will be worth it we have tournament on board so you have to think about a lot of these prizes now i go for a second tournament here didn't really want to do so because in a thin deck the provinces have a greater chance of being in your opponent's hand meaning your tournaments won't draw but uh, for now it seems okay so you see my opponent picked up a merchant there he also has a silver which is perfectly reasonable i'll go for a silver of my own here looking for merchants so tournaments plus merchants plus whatever lingering treasures so it should get you up to your province in no time here wharf for my opponent and i'm gonna follow him here on the wharf seems like we're following very similar game plans here get some draw going and then let's see what we could do with the prizes now a couple of other thoughts i had for this game here this is the first interesting point i this is a bad lookout for me here. I think I have to trash the silver and just rebuy it. Uh, leaving the wharf on top of the deck, of course. Wharf is a great card. You want to play that more times than not. So I do buy back the silver here. First kind of non-trivial decision. Well, for me anyway, at that point in the game. Um, so my opponent, he seems to be a little bit ahead on the trashing front, which means he has his deck under more control. He has, um, you know, a better estimate of what it can and cannot do. Especially considering that my lookout there just failed, so to speak. I trashed not copper, not estate. So a second war for my opponent, that seems to be, you know, exactly what I wanted to do. Try to get the wars running end to end. And in between, you play a bunch of merchants and tournaments, get your province, and then see what prize you want. To me, princess is the most valuable prize on the board. There's enough actions in wall village the attack can be combated by wharfs you know hand size refilling and lookouts trashing but the price reduction isn't here at all which makes princess in my eyes way more valuable than the other two big prizes bag of gold and is not really that interesting neither is the diadem honestly so here my opponent um he thinks for a bit on this lookout turn he discards a wharf which i found interesting he did manage to trash our copper so it wasn't a terrible lookout for him but discarding the wharf is interesting i thought that he would have liked to keep it running end to end uh, maybe he could get back to the wharf here after playing the second lookout and he ends up having to trash a merchant here which is not good news for him at all and he does manage to play the wharf uh, another interesting point in this game so i recognize it state of my opponent's deck right just two coppers and an estate in hand as his junk cards a lot less than me his play here is to go for double merchant i expected gold in gold in his position but double merchant is fine that puts his total amount of money in the deck to eight dollars meaning 
If you get to province next turn, if he draws everything, and he probably will, granted that he just has the two coppers and an estate in his deck. Now, what do I do in response to this? Because the way I see things going here is that he is going to buy province next turn, win prizes before me, and then I'll just be in the back for the remainder of the game. I don't think I can uh, follow him uh, along that line and come out victorious, so I am going to try something a little bit different here. Now, in this position, I have a couple options. Wharf Merchant comes to mind. Definitely that comes to mind. But I thought, given the state of my opponent's deck, I needed to do something not just different, but perhaps a little bit risky as well. Just a Merchant is also possible here. But what I ended up going for was the province. I ended up buying the province here, and I didn't consider it at the time, but there's also an additional factor that comes into play with the province, and that is the mountain pass. So these landmarks, they're important. I paid attention to them during the game, despite me not mentioning them until just now. Mountain pass forces my opponent to bid. Meaning he is going to say, look, I am willing to go into however much debt at this point in time. In his position, he doesn't have a province yet, meaning he can't get any prizes. And I think the princess is pretty important here to get to that. So if he bids anything, any amount, even up to one debt, I know that he only has $8 in his deck, meaning if he bids anything non-zero, he cannot buy province. So he ends up bidding nine. And I decide to leave him with the 9 debt. It means he probably won't be able to buy province for a couple turns, meaning hopefully I could scoop up as many of the prizes as I would like. And I would like all of the big three followers last, of course. Followers last. So I give him the 8 points and the 9 debt, or 9 points and 8 debt, something like that. 8 debt, 8 points. I give that to him. He probably bid it. Bid, not bid it, bid 8, thinking he could clear all of his debt here, but after trashing a copper out with his lookout, and me also being able to block the province here, so it's another small factor that played into my mountain pass decision to pass the points across, I knew he wouldn't be able to clear all of the debt this turn, because I could block his tournament here. Did get lucky to see the two together, I know my deck isn't terribly under control, but... Um, I made that play anyway, right? So you see I draw two coppers here, not unexpected for the kind of deck that I have. I go for the steed first here, despite me saying princess is most important, just for some draw fishing for a wharf. Had I found wharf there, that would have been excellent. I probably could have bought another wharf and then play that immediately on the next turn, have wharves in play every single turn. Didn't turn out that way. And I think here um, I am going to consider a wharf, but go for Jester, and now it looks very, very bad, and perhaps it is bad uh, to pick up the Jester, maybe I should have picked up the Wharf there, but I knew in the back I had a Wharf here, and I probably could have bought a Wharf on this turn, and the Jester on his thin deck should be quite good, I should be pulling a lot of nice things off of his deck with the Jester. So again, because he trashed a copper, I blocked his um, tournament. He still has to clear debt on this turn, meaning I know for sure he can't buy province. I still have another shot at getting to my princess, and I have two tournaments in the deck. So an even better chance of getting to my princess before he does. So he can't buy province yet, he still has to buy some money somewhere. Goes for a market here, which I think is still not enough to pick up a province. Um, he only has the five there, I believe. So that market will put him up to six total. And I do manage to get to the princess here. So, state of the deck. Actually, no, I'm not. On the next turn. So, playing tournament here, this is a mistake. I knew the province was in the um, back as well as another tournament. I still played the tournament thinking that I needed money for what um, I wanted to do on this turn. Doesn't turn out to be true. I just played the wharf. So, that was a misplay from my end there. To play that tournament. But I am going to pick up the um, princess here. I still think... yeah. Oh no, my opponent does manage to get to the 8 here. So now he can get prizes. Um, if I had left the tournament on top, of course. the With the province, for sure I would have picked up the princess. As it is here, I still have to draw through a bit of cards here. It doesn't have to come 
better lucky than good sometimes, right? So managed to get up to the princess here, but maybe if I had left that tournament province pay on top, I would have been able to pick up um, all of the three prizes by this point in time and not give my opponent any chance for those. So the state of the deck here is that I'm a little bit um, more junky than my opponent, but I have two prizes, two big prizes, Wolf, uh, not Wolf, Princess and Steed. And I do pick up a Warfare from the Jester. So already worth its buy there, the Jester. And I managed to stick my Wolf into play. So we are looking okay so far. Okay. I would like to be a little bit cleaner than this, but we'll see how things go. Playing Lookout at this point in the game is really just a gamble. I'm glad I trashed my Lookout on that one turn where I bought the Province there. I just have the one. I don't need to be playing, you know, Lookout Roulette at this point in the game. I already had my fair share earlier having to trash a silver so six here could be another province for me it could be another province for me but i decide to go on and build here a little bit so i pick up our walled village to play that freshly gained wharf off of the jester and a bunch of merchants as money here most reliable money on the board because you know it just draws an extra card there it doesn't uh, come up your deck in any way so I decided to build instead of going for the province there because I felt like, all right, now I was, you know, ahead at this point in the game. Uh, my opponent does manage to get his prize here. So the last of the big three, the followers. Um, so it is going to be a bit irritating to trash the curse there. I don't think I can draw all the way to the end of the deck and then play the lookout. As well as this discard attack will hurt a little bit. I do discard the province here. Um, I don't really want a prize, to be honest, so I don't care to keep the province in hand, and I'm not going to block any of his tournaments. He just has the one tournament. So my opponent, he goes for a walled village and a merchant here. My tournaments get blocked, which is not a happy sight at all. And I have not a lot of money, but I do manage to stick the princess into play, so that makes things a bit better for me. More importantly, I didn't manage to get a Wharf into play. And I have two coming up in the last nine cards here. I really need to get the draw rolling. Really need to get the draw rolling here. So I decided to play a bit longer in this game here. Because there was some extra points in Fountain. And um, Duchies as well. I am actually quite, you know tentative about my position here. I, feel, I felt like my opponent's deck is much better than mine and if he wants to play the province game going for one province a turn from here on until the end of the game then I will probably lose right I can't follow him there because I gave him the eight points off of the mountain pass so I needed to play a slightly different game to, to just you know province province for each of us to maybe have a shot at winning here. And there's a lot of points on Fountain, a lot, a lot of points on Fountain. All the more important to be picking up wharves and markets here, just to keep those plus buys open. That also was part of my decision to trash that lookout a bit early, the second lookout. It means that I keep a few extra coppers in the deck. Maybe it's not worth it, but um, I chose to do so anyway. So bag of gold comes out for my opponent. He gains a gold, still not able to buy a province. I'm amazed here, right? I really thought that he would be able to buy provinces, but he hasn't been able to do so since the first one. A bit of a thinking here. Do I play the Jester before triggering the shuffle or not? Now, considering I only have three actions, I decide not to do so because I have things like merchants um, that I might want to play. So if I play Jester and then Wharf, um, the second wolf, which would be my last action, might draw merchants dead. Whereas if I play the wolves first, I can play all these nice cantripy cards here without having to worry about drawing them dead. So, another decision here. Do I give my opponent the copper? Yeah, I think I give him the copper here. I don't really want it at this point in time. He doesn't seem to be going after fountain points either. So I think it's... um just going to be a junk card for him right now instead of you know making him go for fountain so i go for another warfare i managed to get two into play i would like to get two into play next turn as well um i need to pick up a world village to play my freshly bought wharf and what do i do on the last six here do i buy province i could 
but I decided to go for another wharf and a market. At this point, I'm again like I'm like I mentioned before, I'm angling a little bit towards fountain, a little bit towards fountain. So I want to have lots and lots of buys. May not be able to get all ten coppers, or maybe I just need seven or eight at this point. I also need to find out how many coppers do I have in the deck. I don't have no idea. But yeah, the more buys I have, um, obviously the more flexibility I have, especially when there's fountain on the board. So, uh, my opponent here, now he shows that he's, uh, his intention for picking up uh, coppers uh, to go after the fountain point. So he picks up two coppers there. Again, if I don't know how much coppers I have, I sure as hell don't know how many coppers my opponent has. Um, no idea. So I just have to pay attention and hopefully figure it out somehow. Steed here, not the default cards and actions. I don't need the cards, but I'll take the actions and the coins, actually, coins. Um, just a bit extra money, gaining a wall village, happily take that. I will happily take that. I have no idea what's on the top of my deck here, so I'm just going to play my wharf and draw it all up. Turns out it was all good cards, so yep. Not going to play Lookout Roulette for the rest of this game, probably, unless absolutely necessary. Go in for a duchy here, and basically I am going to start going after the green very hard. Um, piles are running, which are out, wall villages are low as well as wharves. Maybe something could happen with those piles, especially with Jester around, uh, hard to say. An option here for me was to build a little bit more, right? I could get a few more markets in this position, perhaps another wharf. I do have the action to play another wharf here. But I do instead go for the line that involves me emptying the provinces. I feel like I can do so. Um, I am able to get three provinces on this turn if I want it. I take two and think about wharf market for quite some time but i decide to go for three i have three wolves in place so i tell myself okay look you get you got three this turn maybe you could get three next turn because you got three this turn by playing two wolves you have three wolves in play an extra wolf maybe you could get three more next turn and if not well definitely two well not definitely but if i can't get three i'll probably be able to get two uh, this candlestick maker, I'm, I was happy to see my opponent by this candlestick maker. It doesn't draw, so I'm I'm thrilled about the candlestick maker, honestly. Again, still not able to pick up a province. I'm not sure. Maybe I overestimated my opponent's deck there, but I mean, I'll, I'll take it. Um, my tournaments do get blocked here, which is not good for my money situation. I'm wanting to pick up um, the three provinces in one go here. And I do end up falling short of the um, $18 mark, just coming up with 13 here. So I'm going to pick up a couple provinces. I am keeping a, a, an eye out on the estate pile with Princess in play. Those cost zero, just buys I need to take those down. But I don't have enough buys here to finish the game. I would need, what, only $6, but 10 buys to finish the game on World Villages and Estates in this position. So perhaps a few more markets would have gone a long way to helping me end the game there. So here, that was a foolish play. The double province was absolutely, utterly foolish. I have no idea how many coppers my opponent has. He comes up with nine here and four buys. Province and three coppers. What if that pushes him over the fountain mark? And he ends up with 15 plus 6, 21 points, which is enough to win by one point so picking up two provinces there was a garbage play and as it turns out at the end of the game i'd see that my opponent was actually one by short had he had nine and five buys there were eight and five buys that was province quadruple copper to win the game and that would have been a hundred percent my fault a hundred percent my fault if i lost that game but i managed to get lucky and I come out here with the win in game one. So a bit scratchy. A bit scratchy. I haven't played competitively in a very long time. Uh, hopefully I'll get better as time goes on. So that is game one. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.